Hey, hey, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Shanae, and today we're actually not cooking anything, but we're going to talk about Instant Pot, and specifically about this dreaded burn message. Isn't it really frustrating when you're cooking dinner and you get this message, burn, on your Instant Pot, and you don't know what to do? Um, actually, today we're going to talk about how to prevent this burn message, and if you do get it, how to fix it. Um, there are four main mistakes that causes the burn message and because I already know what causes it, I can manipulate my pot and actually um, get the burn message. It's nothing to be scared of. It doesn't mean that you're in pot in, on fire or it's burning anything. It's a safety mechanism that Instant Pot put in uh, in their uh, machines. Basically, the burn message pops up when the pot is overheated. And there are four main mistakes, um, causes that triggers this message. And let's go through them right now. The number one issue that causes the burn message is not using enough liquid. For example, in this pot, I don't have any liquid and I just turn it on for one minute and that's what it caused the burn message. So to trigger this burn notice, I um, simply put the empty pot after cooking my fried rice and I just turn it on, set it for one minute and that's what it caused the burn notice. And I'll show you how, what I mean when nothing burns on the bottom pot is preventing things to burn. So basically just go ahead and release the pressure first. And when the pin drops, carefully open it. And yeah, nothing has burned. It wasn't this yellow. It was, um, it actually just browned a little bit, but other than that, um, it's hot actually. Um, other than that, it didn't scorch or anything. So. That's just, just so you ease your mind. Um, it's really, really important to use thin liquid like water or chicken or beef broth. Make sure it's clear. Clear um, broth uh, is very important. Another thing is for six quart instant pot, you need one cup of water, at least one cup of water. And for eight quart um, instant pots, you need at least two cups of water. There's always exceptions. You can just go a little bit lower. If you know there's nothing that's gonna scorch on the bottom, you can go a little lower, but that's the uh, minimum amount of liquid that you want to have in your pot in order for it to come to pressure properly. The mistake number two is using too thick sauces for your meal. For example, thick sauces like pasta sauce, tomato-based sauces, creamy sauces like Alfredo sauce, cream of mushroom soup, you know, canned soup and whatnot. And so whenever you use this thick sauces, it tends to scorch on the bottom uh, and that triggers the burn message. And in order to avoid that, you can cook it with, um, cook things uh, with a pasta sauce, for example, but there are um, workarounds, basically, the number one, what you want to do is if you're using pasta sauce, for example, make sure to layer the ingredients properly and do not mix it after you layer them, don't mix it. Great example is my meatballs and spaghetti and meatballs recipe. You put the meat on the bottom and then the pasta and then the sauce. You don't want to mix the sauce so it goes on the bottom and if you do layer it properly, you won't get the burn orders. Another example is uh, cream-based uh, food. For example, like a chicken alfredo. I have chicken alfredo pasta instant pot recipe. And for that, you just wanna incorporate the dairy sauce at the end after you cook the pasta. Also, another way to go around the uh, creamy sauce is use the pot and pot cooking method. I have a delicious scallop recipe scallop potato recipe in the instant pot and I use pot and pot cooking method. Basically, you put your liquids on the bottom, put a trivet on, on, on the bottom and then you place your food in an oven safe dish and put it in an um, instant pot. 
So that's a great example of uh, using dairy-based recipes and using pot and pot cooking method. Mistake number three is not deglazing the pot after sauteing or searing something. Um, for example, when you're making stew, when you sear the meat, um, their fond is um, like little pieces of food that's stuck on the bottom. And in order to deglaze it, you just add a little bit water and scrape the bottom with a wooden spoon. And if you don't deglaze the pot properly, it's the pot thinks that something is stuck on the bottom and it's burning and it just shuts it off and sends a burn notice. So make sure to deglaze your pot properly and really well, not making sure there's nothing stuck on the bottom. And Mistake number four is really easy. Make sure to always check if your ceiling ring is in. And if it is in, make sure it's uh, set in properly. If it's just like not set properly, it will, it, will, it will not come to pressure. It won't seal the pressure inside. It will leak the steam and then all the steam will come out and evaporate the liquid. And that will cause the trigger trigger the burn notice. Another mistake is not turning the wall to ceiling. Instead, if you set it to venting, the steam also will escape and the, your pot won't come to pressure and the liquid that you have in your pot will evaporate and that will cause the burn notice. So just make sure always check the ring and the valve. That's about it. If you always make sure to follow these rules, you won't get the burn notice. And if you do get that burn notice, here's what you have to do. If it's something quick cooking thing, like oatmeal or something, Instant Pot actually on their official website, they said you can like let it cook for a little bit and then continue on with the recipe, like release the pressure and everything. And I completely agree. I've gotten this burn notice with my bacon ranch potatoes sometimes uh, when I forget to deglaze it well. But if you do get the um, burn notice and it because cooks just five minutes, you just wait for five minutes and release the pressure and your food will be cooked. But if it's cooked, something that cooks long time, for example, like a pot roast, that you forgot to deglaze it well and you have to cook it for um, an hour or so, you wanna release the pressure Carefully open the pot, it's really hot. Make sure, don't forget about it. Be very careful and remove your food, clean your pot and put everything back in and start over. I know it's cumbersome, that's why it's really nice to have a second inside um, inner pot so that you don't have to go through like cleaning and everything. So you could just transfer into the different pot and set it, set it in. So that's what you have to do again. If you eat something cooks fast, don't worry about it. Just let the, like set the time for five minutes or so and then um, release the pressure and it will be, most likely everything will be cooked. The burn notice is actually to, is there to prevent the food to burn. Just like whenever machine, the, or the instant pot senses that the thing is getting heated, it triggers that message. So there's nothing to be scared of. Nothing is gonna burn too much. So, but just don't wait too, too long if it's something that um, you are cooking long time. I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you had learned anything new and if you have any other suggestions, please leave me in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.